Hello, this video is going to be looking at determining the acidity or basicity of a salt. And a salt is basically a generic term for an ionic compound. And it's important to keep in mind that when you place an ionic compound in water, it is going to dissociate into ions. So when we're trying to determine the acidity or basicity of the salt, really we're looking at the individual ions. So if you look at this table at the top here, um, I encourage you to, whenever you see an ionic compound, break it apart into the individual ions and analyze them separately. And then when you're looking at those individual ions, the whole concept of conjugate acid-base pairs becomes important. So if you look at our notes off here to the side, there's a relationship between the strength of an acid and this conjugate base and vice versa. The general rule is the stronger the acid, the weaker the conjugate base, and the weaker the acid, the stronger the conjugate base. There's this mathematical relationship right here that tells us that. So the stronger the acid, the weaker its conjugate base is going to be. And if the acid is so strong that it's one of our six strong acids, that's these ones up here, then its conjugate is going to be neutral. That means that its conjugate is so weak, it is a weaker base than water is. So when you stick it in water, it won't do anything. The conjugate of a weak acid is going to be a weak base. So key takeaway here is weak pairs with weak, strong pairs with neutral. Um, and this down here in the bottom is a summary then of thinking about your anions and cations and whether they're going to be, you know, acidic or basic. And so let's apply these rules using these practice problems here at the bottom. So let's say we're looking at sodium um, bicarbonate. What I want to do first is I want to split it out into its individual ions. So it's going to dissolve in water, it's going to dissociate into ions, and I want to analyze those ions separately. So the sodium ion, we can think of it as being a ion from a strong base, and we know that strong pairs with neutral. So our sodium ion is going to be neutral. And so basically our alkali and alkaline earth metal ions, we can typically think of those as being neutral. The bicarbonate ion, HCO3, it is an anion. And your anions you want to think of as being a conjugate of an acid. So basically ask yourself, what would happen if I added a hydrogen to this anion? In this case, I would get H2CO3. Then you'd ask yourself, is H2CO3 one of these six strong acids I have memorized? Turns out it's not one of the six strong acids. That means that H2CO3 is a weak acid. And if this is a weak acid, we know weak pairs with weak. So this thing right here must be a weak base. So this compound has a neutral cation and an anion that is a weak base. So this compound overall is going to be a base, meaning when you stick it in water, uh, the pH ooh, is going to be greater than 7. All right, let's look at the second one here, potassium nitrate. So when you dissolve it in water, it splits apart into the ions potassium and nitrate. So potassium falls in the category of my alkali metals. So my alkali metal cations tend to be neutral. And nitrate, well, whenever you have an anion, you want to ask yourself, what is the conjugate acid? So the conjugate acid of nitrate is HNO3. Then the next question to ask yourself is, is that one of my strong acids? And in this one, the answer is yes. This is one of my six strong acids. And we know weak pairs with weak, strong pairs with neutral. That tells us that nitrate must be neutral. So this compound is made up of two neutral um, ions, meaning that it is going to have a neutral pH. Um, if you look down here, if you look at iron nitrate, um, we just identified that nitrate was neutral. Let's fill that one in. The iron is a weird one. Let's look under our list of cations. So it's not an alkali metal. Okay, so it doesn't fit that category. Um, so we're going to kind of check through my list. Is it a conjugate of a weak base? Though these types of ions would be like NH4. These would be things that have extra hydrogens floating you know, around than possible hydrogen givers. It's not this. So it falls in the category of other cations. So we saw that in the lab that we did that some small, highly charged cations, like for example, aluminum or iron, they themselves can actually act as acids as well. So the iron ion itself is actually a little bit acidic. And it might seem weird, how can it be a hydrogen giver? It doesn't have any hydrogens to give. But what happens is, if you imagine, this is a simplified version, 
um, you've got this, you know, positive iron and you've got this, you know, water molecule, right, this nice electronegative oxygen there. What happens is the iron basically like grabs a hydroxide from water. So it's kind of a weird one. Instead of being like a hydrogen giver taker, you can kind of think of it as being a hydroxide taker. And again, this is a less common example that I wouldn't like worry about it so much, but it's just kind of an FYI. You may or may not actually run into this on a test ever. So this one is going to be an acid because iron's going to be slightly acidic there. If you look at this one, you've got CH3, NH3 plus, and Cl minus. Um, let's look at the anion first. I think sometimes those are the easier ones to look at. So with the anion, you want to add a hydrogen to it and say, okay, what's its conjugate acid? Okay, it's HCl. Then the next question to ask yourself is, is that one of my strong acids? In this case, yes. HCl is one of the six strong acids I've memorized. And weak pairs with weak, strong pairs with neutral. So that tells us that Cl- must be a neutral anion. Now let's look at your cation. So if we go through my categories, um, it's not an alkali metal. Is it the conjugate of a weak base? Well, let's take a hydrogen away. And I mean, that seems reasonable. This, this is not a strong base. It's not one of the strong bases I memorized. This looks like it might be a weak base. We know that um, weak bases are often amines, like nitrogen containing compounds. And the reason why this works, if you don't do, want to do a quick kind of bonding review, this is what the structure would look like of CH3 and H2. Notice it's got this highly electronegative um, element right here, and we've got this attractive lone pair. So what that means is when a water comes along, this hydrogen is going to be attracted to that nitrogen over there, and that's how it ends up being a weak base. So this is a going to be an acid. The other rule of thumb, if you're looking at your cations, notice the only cations that are neutral are basically your alkali metals. So anything that's not an alkali metal, you can kind of assume it's going to be an acid. That's the basic shortcut you can look at. Um, let's take this one down here. You've got potassium. You've got carbonate. Let's look at carbonate. Um, there are two ways to look at what the conjugate of carbonate is. You could either add one hydrogen to it or two hydrogens. Technically, this one right here is the actual conjugate acid. Um, you can think of both of these as kind of conjugates in some way, shape, or form. Um, either way, though, what you want to do is you want to add hydrogens to your anion and then look at that resulting compound and ask yourself, is this one of the strong acids? So no matter whether I added one hydrogen to it or two hydrogens to it, neither one of these are strong acids. Therefore, we're going to say there are weak acids, and the conjugate of a weak acid is a weak base. There are weak pairs with weak, strong pairs with neutral. Now let's look at my cation. Um, potassium is the is an alkali earth metal. Sorry, an alkali metal. So we know it's going to be neutral. So we've got a neutral cation, an anion that's a base. So this one is going to have a is going to be a base, meaning the pH will be greater than seven when you dissolve that in water. Um, for number four, that was going to be an acid. So three and four are both acids, meaning the pH would be less than seven when you dissolve it in water. And then let's do one more real quick. So if you look at this one, you break it apart as the ions, NH4 and Br-. Um, Br- is the conjugate of HBr. HBr is one of your strong acids, therefore Br- is neutral. NH4 is the conjugate of the weak base NH3. You notice we have another you know, nitrogen compound in my weak bases. So the conjugate of a weak base is a weak acid. So you've got an acidic cation and a neutral anion. So this one's going to have a pH less than 7. It's an acid. And if any of you are wondering, like, what if we put two things together? Like, what if we put together, for example, like NH4 and CN minus? NH4 is the conjugate acid of a weak base. We've said over here that... NH4 is going to be a weak acid. CN minus is the um, conjugate base of a weak acid. So HCN is a weak acid. Therefore, CN minus is a weak base. So if you're wondering, like, how would I predict the pH of a compound like this? Well, that would be hard to do without additional information. So 
you've got a combination of a weak acid and a weak base, you would have to know the relative K values of those. So you'd have to know the Ka of NH4 and the Kb of Cn minus. And if you knew those, you could say whichever it has the larger K value would you know, like win. So let's say that the Ka of NH4 is like 10 to the negative 4. I'm just making these up, so we're just guessing here. And <laughs> let's say the Kb over here is like 10 to the negative 7. Then you'd say, oh, NH4 is a better acid than Cn is a base. So overall, this thing would be acidic but you need to know the something about the K values to do that. All right. Thanks for listening. For listening.